Currently working on a Ford Focus. This is a 2012 model and it's got a coolant loss fault. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you what's causing that and how I'm gonna rectify it. Now with any coolant loss fault that you would encounter, there is a number of ways that you can go about trying to find it. One of those is doing a pressure test using a pressure tester. Another one is getting the vehicle up to operate in temperature and monitor it as that temperature creeps up to see when it's under pressure where the coolant loss is coming from. I needed neither of those in this instance because the coolant was dripping out straight away. So when I had it up on the hoist, looking from the underside, I was visibly able to see the coolant loss coming from a pipe on the upper side of it, which you can see here. So with that said, I brought the vehicle down again and I was able to see that the pipe which pushed into the upper part of the radiator, it has an O-ring on the inside of it and I can see the retaining clip is not seating in and not capable of clipping over on the rad like it should. And the reason being is somebody has done work at some stage and rerouted that wiring loom the wrong side of that pipe, causing extra pressure on the pipe, causing it to crimp and then pull away from the retaining clip. When it pulls away from the retaining clip, it then unseats that O-ring and causes a coolant loss to pass through. Now, the reason I wanted to make this quite simple, straightforward video is to showcase that not every coolant leak that you encounter or not every fault you encounter will have a common problem. Sometimes you're gonna be doubling over other people's work. Maybe the customer has attempted the job themselves. Maybe there's accidental damage on it. Maybe there was accidental road damage on it where something has impacted and caused a coolant loss. So bear all of those in mind as you're inspecting it. There is some very common coolant loss issues on focuses, um, but this is certainly not one of them. Now I said about rerouting that wiring loom and checking the condition of the O-ring on the pipe. After I had done all that, I rechecked it while it was in the workshop, got it up to operating temperature, left it while I went to another job and could see that there was no coolant loss coming back while I had it in the workshop. After that, it was a case of bringing, for, bringing it for a road test to see if anything would come but I did contact the customer, advise them before I took the road test that while the coolant loss may stop now, I couldn't guarantee that it would and I would strongly recommend having that pipe fitted. If not immediately, very soon down the road because you could have issues with that O-ring and pipe later cracking and splitting. But again, it's the customer's care. They can make their own decision on that. I'm tasked with a job on the day and that's exactly what I did. So the next thing was to bring this vehicle for a road test and see how we got on. So just coming off the final road test with this now, no overheating, no loss of coolant, and that seems to be okay for now. I'll be telling the customer to monitor that closely. There is a um, visible amount of stress that happened on that hose going in, or that pipe going into the left-hand upper part of the radiator. With knowing what happened, we can uh, monitor it closely, and if any issues arise, replace it instantly. Or if the customer wants, order that part in and replace it before anything may happen to it down the road. This is just another one of those cases where if you are more careful carrying out work, if you know what you're doing, when you are rerouting uh, looms and cables, be it an alternator, be it a starter, whatever you are working on, you want to make sure that there's no tension on them, them looms as you, uh, as you route them back or that you're not rubbing against something or creating tension on something else. So bear that in mind when you're doing any work, whether you're in a professional environment or you're doing it for yourself, always double check work and always make sure that there's no additional tension or rubbing when you refit components back together again. Really hope you have found this video useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.